Hello everybody. Today we will discuss exhaust monophosphate shunt. The most important reaction of the carbohydrate metabolism which takes place in the cytosol of the liver, adipose tissue, RBC, testes, lactating mammary gland and why it is important is because it provides NADPH and as we know NADPH is most important in the fatty acid synthesis steroid synthesis and it also forms provides of molecules which are the intermediate or the starting reaction intermediate or, or initial molecules to start nucleotide synthesis also helps in the synthesis of nucleic acids so HMP shunt is very important because it provides NADPH which will be helpful in the fatty acid synthesis, steroid synthesis it forms the synthesis of nucleotides and of nucleic acids. It takes place in the cytosol and of the liver, adipose tissue and RBC. Now the most important thing to remember is that we start with a 6 carbon molecule. That is glucose 6-phosphate and 6 molecules of 6 carbon glucose 6 phosphate take place in the reaction take place in the cycle so 6 molecules of 6 carbon glucose 6 phosphate will take place in the cycle the cycle has oxidative phase and non oxidative phase so there are two phases oxidative and non oxidative phase first we see the oxidative phase then we will see the non oxidative phase coming to the oxidative phase of the HMP shunt we have glucose 6 phosphate which we can either cut from glucose or which we can either get from glycogen this glucose 6-phosphate will form 6-phospho gluconate sorry 6-phospho gluconolactone because the names are almost similar it becomes a bit confusing and then it forms 6-phospho gluconate This finally will form ribulose 5 phosphate and this is where our oxidative phase ends. So this is the oxidative phase for the formation of ribulose 5 phosphate. Glucose 6 phosphate as we know was 6 carbon and ribulose 5 phosphate is the 5 carbon molecule. As I had told 6 carbon of glucose, 6 molecules of glucose 6 phosphate will take place. It will form 6 molecules of 6 phosphogluconoate, 6 molecules of 6 phosphogluconate, and 6 molecules of ribulose 5 phosphate. So there are 6 molecules that are taking place that, it, that finally form 6 molecules of ribulose 5 phosphate. This is the most important enzyme of the cycle that is 6 phosphoglucose, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase. It is the regulatory enzyme. The next is the 6-phosphogluconolactone hydrolase. And the next is the phosphogluconate dehydrogenase.
so this first reaction it will form NADPH plus H plus the second reaction will require water molecule and the third reaction will again form NADP H plus H plus since these reactions are taking having six molecules of glucose six phosphate so six NADPH has been formed six water molecules is used and again six molecules of NADPH plus H plus is formed so in the end of the oxidative phase you have six molecules of ribulose 5 phosphate which is a five carbon molecule and you have 6 NADPH plus H over here, 6 NADPH plus H plus over here, so you have 12 NADPH because this was a 6 carbon molecule, 6 phosphate gluconate and this is a 5 carbon molecule that is uh, ribulose 5 phosphate, there would be a removal of carbon dioxide, so 6 carbon dioxide molecules have been removed. Now I told that glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase is a regulatory enzyme, the most important enzyme of this cycle. And if there is deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate, that is this enzyme is deficient, it leads to glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and this causes a hemolytic anemia. It is a 6-linked hemolytic anemia and it is, more, uh, it is more aggravated by intake of drugs like primocoine, acetanilide, sulfonamide and fava beans. So whenever a patient who has glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and intakes drugs like primaquine, acetanilide, sulfamethoxazole or fava beans, it leads to more of the hemolytic anemia. And uh, this G6 PD deficiency is protective against malaria also. So it is a blessing in disguise for those who have falciparum malaria. So oxidative phase we have discussed. Now coming to the non-oxidative phase. So now in the non-oxidative phase it will start with ribulose 5-phosphate which was already being formed. It is a good cycle because the game is only of the numbers. So ribulose 5-phosphate you have 5 molecules of 5 carbon ribulose 5-phosphate. Now this will form either xylulose 5-phosphate or it will form ribose 5-phosphate. So if it has to form xylulose from ribulose, it would be epimerase enzyme and it had to form ribose, then it would be ketoisomerase. Now both xylulose 5-phosphate is 5-carbon, ribulose 5-phosphate is 5-carbon. We had 5 molecules of ribulose 5-phosphate. We had 6 molecules of ribulose 5-phosphate, sorry over here. The numbers become very confusing. 6 molecules were there. There were 5-carbon. So it is... 2 plus 2 molecules that are 4 molecules of xylulose 5-phosphate that has been formed and 2 molecules of ribose 5-phosphate that has been formed. Now this 5-carbon plus 5-carbon that is 10-carbon. So this 10 now we have in the pool that is 10-carbon atoms. So this xylulose 5-phosphate and ribose 5-phosphate together will lead to production of will lead to production of pseudoheptulose. 7 phosphate and glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate. So it is a 7 carbon molecule. This is a 3 carbon molecule. So pseudoheptulose is a 7 carbon molecule. Glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate is a 7 carbon molecule. There are Two molecules of pseudoheptulose that is formed and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Again, two molecules are being formed. So, 5 carbon plus 5 carbon. So, there were 10 carbons. So, 1 7 carbon pseudoheptulose would be formed. 1 3 carbon glyceraldehyde would be formed. 
there were uh, six molecules 2 plus a uh, 2 plus 2 plus 4 uh, to 4 4 plus 2 6 so two molecules of cedar heptol has been formed two molecules of glyceraldehyde would be formed so 20 carbon atoms have been uh, 20 carbon atoms have been used up now this this and this takes place in the presence of enzyme transketolase and whenever there is a transketolase enzyme in the cycle thymine pyrophosphate is being used this cetohaptolase and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will again form erythrose 4 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate So erythrose 4 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate this is a 4 carbon molecule and fructose 6 phosphate is a 6 carbon molecule erythrose 4 phosphate 2 molecules of erythrose 4 phosphate has been formed and 2 molecules of fructose 6 phosphate have been formed now this erythrose 4 phosphate again this enzyme is transaldolase again in the present uh, transaldolase this erythrose 4 phosphate in the present and the cetos 4 phosphate will react with xylose heptolase this erythrose 4 phosphate will react with xylose heptolase to form fructose 6 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so 4 carbon atom plus 5 carbon atom so 6 carbon atom plus 3 carbon atom fine so this reacts with forming fructose 6 phosphate finally we have glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate and this erythrose 4 phosphate that has two molecules and xylose 5 phosphate molecule for xylose 5 phosphate that is again molecules so we have two molecules of fructose 6 phosphate and glyceraldehyde again we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Finally actually we have fructose 6 phosphate over here which can take part and form which can form glucose 6 phosphate. Okay. So this part of fructose 6 phosphate will form this part of fructose 6 phosphate can form glucose 6 phosphate now this fructose 6 phosphate will also form glucose 6 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can form fructose 6 phosphate so 2 fructose 6 phosphate 2, fr two fructose 6 phosphate over here 2 fructose 6 phosphate over here this will form glucose 6 phosphate So this will form glucose 6 phosphate and this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can also form fructose 6 phosphate which will eventually lead to the formation of glucose 6 phosphate. So finally in the reaction we have glucose 6 phosphate and this glucose 6 phosphate finally how many glucose 6 phosphate do we have in the reaction 5 glucose 6 phosphate that is 2 glucose 6 phosphate over here 2 plus 2 that is 4 2 plus 2 that is 4 this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will form 1 fructose 6 phosphate this will form 1 glucose 6 phosphate so finally we have 5 glucose 6 phosphate in the whole reaction and 5 glucose 6 phosphate in the whole reaction and 12 NADPH that is being formed 6 carbon dioxide that is being formed if we summarize this hexose monophosphate shunt we can say that when 6 molecules of glucose 6 phosphate were being formed when 6 molecules of glucose 6 phosphate were utilized in the reaction 12 NADP plus 12 H plus 12 NADP plus plus 6 H2O 
were utilized. Six carbon dioxide was formed, released. Twelve NADPH was formed. Twelve NADPH plus twelve H plus was formed. Finally, five molecules of glucose six phosphate was formed. So six glucose six phosphate take part in the reaction. The final product is five glucose six phosphate. The most important thing in this reaction is the production of twelve NADPH molecules. and the intermediate that is ribose 5 phosphate that's all for the hexose monophosphation thank you